So on to this topic when it comes to Collider, they talk about the volume. And the volume is the big stage that they created for the Mandalorian specifically years ago, uh, where it's a big screen. It's just this big screen that they can put everything uh, you know on with the camera. It moves a certain way and the picture moves with it. So it looks like you're really there. And yes, there are limitations to it. We've seen the limitations to it in the Mandalorian. We've seen the limitations to it. Specifically, we saw it in Obi-Wan. It looked horrendous in Obi-Wan. But it is an amazing piece of technology that has really transformed and changed the way that filming can be done when it comes to film or TV shows. It's a lot cheaper. It's a lot faster. There's some cool things that you can do with it. But Collider believes that that it's actually ruined lightsaber battles. And they go, lightsaber battles are usually the highlight of most Star Wars stories. They are the climax of the story arc. When words can no longer solve anything and a clashing of blades offers the only possible resolution. This usually comes in the form of stopping someone from doing something or going somewhere. And it's something so common in the franchise, we don't really think much about it or about why characters are fighting anymore we just enjoy it and we should uh, but if we can give as much thought to how they fight as we do the, the why it gets even better and that's where soka's recent fights become outliers so they say lots of duels in the past two episodes all very well designed and choreographed but the single trait they all share is there's practically no moving around in episode four the duels with shin and her in a small area in the woods uh, as does Ahsoka with Maroc. In the first duel, there's even a small amount of jumping and force throwing, but never straying far from the where the fight began. Later, Ahsoka takes on Balin's school, and the fighting happens inside the actual projection. Uh, and then in Ahsoka has a fight with Anakin in the World Between Worlds, but they only move a few steps forward and backwards, and even in the Clone Wars flashback, there's very little moving around, too. As you can see, you know they're showing some things here. They say the volume is 20 feet tall and 75 feet across. And although we're terrible with numbers and couldn't have made an estimate, it's unlikely that any of those scenes go beyond these same dimensions. It's a big studio for sure, but that's still very little moving around for such an important part of Star Wars storytelling. Lightsaber duels are a whole different narrative form, and the combatants are not the only characters that play important parts. Their surroundings matter just as much as their abilities. In episode one, the part of the, the palace where the duel of fates takes place offers lots of challenges from characters being thrown off bridges, the laser barriers, and the final chasm. Uh, in Star Wars episode... Five, Vader uses all of what's available to him to make quick work of Luke until he corners him. Uh, and then in the Rise of Skywalker, Rey and Kylo deal with uh, the sea uh, above the Death Star wreckage. Uh, okay, so that's 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 the whole idea. And I can see what they're saying. That comes down to people being so excited about the idea of lightsaber battles that are like the prequels. And don't get me wrong, I love me some prequel lightsabers uh, battles. I do, I do. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. We're not in the prequel era. Yes, I get it. The, the Clone Wars stuff on, in, in the show here was the prequel era. I get that. But that wasn't the focus of that scene. That scene wasn't about the lightsaber battle. Yes, the fight in the world between worlds, which is back and forth. Well, they're on a little bridge, a, a thin bridge. And again, it wasn't as much about the lightsaber battle as it was the battle between her and Anakin and really the battle with herself. You take a look at Balin and Ahsoka, that fight that go back and take a look at social media, take a look at the reaction to that fight. Everybody loved it. There was no complaints on, oh, there's not enough flips. There's not enough. They're not running around the entire woods everywhere. I can give you the fight in the woods. But even then, Sabine is not a Jedi. She's not somebody who's going to be doing those types of maneuvers and, and fight choreography. So I get where you want to see more. But the story has yet to ask for it. The story has yet to say, we need a scene like this. So to make this argument shows that you don't necessarily 
And if you're somebody who agrees with this, you don't necessarily understand what is going on in the story. You're simply watching because you want to see these big action sequences that are over the top, but you don't quite understand that the story doesn't require that at the moment. Uh, Trayton says the absence of Nick Gallard doesn't help. He's openly said he'd love to return. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's the stunt coordinator of the prequel trilogy, as you said, and the dude who literally created the seven forms of lightsaber combat. Yes, exactly. Nick Gallard coming back would be amazing, would be fantastic. I would love to see him come back. Uh, I actually thought watching this episode, this latest episode of Ahsoka, just the way Hayden was moving reminded me so much of his combat style in episode three specifically that I thought that Nick Gallard was back, but uh, according to the, the credits, he was not. Uh, but yes, I get, I, look, I love lightsaber duels. I love them. That's one of the reasons why I'm disappointed in The Last Jedi is because The Last Jedi, while it does have a really cool, fun scene in the throne room, it has, it's the only saga film that doesn't have a lightsaber duel in it. And that to me is just an abomination and a, and, and just dis disappointing and upsetting. Um, I love lightsaber duels. Trains says, I agree with you. I just miss generally great lightsaber duels like Duel of the Fates or Anakin vs. Obi-Wan on Mustafar, also known as Battle of Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I miss it too. And I won't lie in the rise of Skywalker, the fight with Ray and Kylo on the wreckage was pretty cool. It was a cool lightsaber fight. It wasn't anything special. Uh, it was missing that Nick Gillard <laughs> choreograph uh, that, that was so prequels like, but then again, like I just said, when you have to realize where the story is taking you, what the story is giving you and the characters involved, does Balin school look like somebody who's going to be jumping around all nimbly, bimbly, like, like a cat. No, no, he's not. He's not that kind of Jedi. He's not that kind of force user. Yeah, Ahsoka is one that loves to do somersaults and flips and stuff like that, but she's older and she's a little more wise. She's not like she was during the Clone Wars. So when you get down to it, you take a look at the story. To me, this article is simply just somebody who doesn't understand or want to understand the story and, and just wants these big set action pieces. And that's what the movies are going to be for. You know, when we get that next film with Ray, <laughs> Ray in it, um, <laughs> that's, that's going to have the, well, hopefully it has lightsaber fights in it. That's where you're going to see that. But hell, when we get the Dave Filoni movie, uh, look, all I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be my, uh, my topic for next week, unless something else goes, but I'm telling you, they better bring Luke Skywalker into that movie. If they are going to adapt the heir to the empire story in some form or fashion, even if it's very loosely based, just saying heir to the empire and having Thrawn, you need to have Luke Skywalker in there. You need to. Trayton says the throne room fight is the best lightsaber duel of the sequel trilogy. The force awakens is, eh, but rise of Skywalker's makes me sick. It's basically just them swinging baseball bats. <laughs> it was a cold location. <laughs> Let's go there. Um, again, you can't, yeah. I mean, lightsaber duel in, in episode eight, it really wasn't a duel. Um, it was just them fighting the Praetorian guards, which, um, you know, they magically have weapons appear here and there. I'm not going to be in the episode eight. Just don't. Um, maybe someday, maybe someday uh, you'll hear my side and what I think episode eight should have been. But yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, when when you take a look at everything, I think you, you just got to you have to appreciate the story for what it is. I agree that like something in Obi-Wan, it felt very, very small. That show as a whole felt very small. Uh, even the fight with Vader and Obi-Wan in that. It felt small, but it was supposed to in, in a sense. And I get that. And I understand that. I do. Because that's where the story took us. Uh, so I don't know who wrote this. I should probably take a look. Uh, Julio Bardini. Julio Bardini from Collider. 
uh yeah man uh maybe maybe just um don't focus so much on the action and focus on the story man that's i'm not that's all i got to say about that and let me th let me know your thoughts i want to know what you think about the volume do you think the lightsaber fights in ahsoka and obi-wan stuff like that have been uh disappointing because of them shooting in the volume let me know your thoughts Triton says, confession time. The duel in the Obi-Wan finale is my second favorite lightsaber duel ever. Here's the thing. And, and I'll talk about this real quick before we move on to the next topic, uh, because it fits with my what if <laughs> video I made. It's not a bad duel. It's not. What I don't like about it, Obi-Wan and, and Vader fighting and Obi-Wan just walks away. Like, that doesn't make any sense. You can't just have Obi-Wan walk away and Vader just stand there. Like there has to be a reason why they're separated, why they're pulled apart because Vader at that moment is seeking his revenge and he's not going to let Obi-Wan walk away no matter what. And Obi-Wan, he knows at that point, like he needs to complete his mission, which was to kill Anakin was to, to, to stop and destroy Anakin. You can't just allow him to walk away and say, yeah, I let Vader live because, you know, Vader. Like, it, that to me is what ruined that for me. Uh, they, they, even if it was just some dumb plot device where rocks fall between them or like in The, in the Force Awakens where the ground breaks, up, breaks them apart. I don't care if it was a dumb plot device like that. There had to be a reason. There has to be a reason why they are no longer able to, to finish the fight and one of them come out victorious. It's that simple. Everything else was decent. The, the emotion behind everything was done well. Triton says, Battle of Heroes is my number one. You know, believe it or not, I love Battle of Heroes. And it's up there in top three. But my favorite is Luke versus Vader in Return of the Jedi. I love the emotion. I love the um, the score. I love just the the raw tension that's that's in that scene. Um, it's not over the top. It's it's just that was my that was you know when I was a kid in the nineties that was the best lightsaber battle there was at the time. There was no prequels and. To me, it just holds a special place in my heart. But I do. I love I love Battle of Heroes. Battle of Heroes is fantastic and amazing. And I will put that probably number two behind the fight in Return of the Jedi. But then again, Return of the Jedi and Revenge of the Sith are my two favorite Star Wars films. And they could flip-flop either one and two, either one of them. And I wouldn't complain because they're my two favorites. Um, I do want to promote this one more time. If you haven't checked it out. Go to the Bridging the Geekdom's YouTube channel. Check out What If the Obi-Wan Kenobi Show Didn't Suck. Inspired by the guys over at Prism who did What If the Sequel Trilogy Was Awesome, I decided to do What If the Obi-Wan Kenobi Show Didn't Suck. I do have another one in the works that is going to be a bit longer and I think better than this one. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But the reviews are in. Look at these reviews. People love it. They love it. They love it. They love it. So go watch it. Love it yourself. Enjoy it. With all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to all of you later.